today I'm here at uh, Superior Cleaning Equipment Company in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, we've got a customer that has purchased a uh, 225 horsepower uh, water blaster. Um, this 225 horse unit, this particular one, comes with a Perkins engine um, that uh, is uh, run through electronic controls. Uh, on the far side, we have a 100 gallon diesel fuel tank back side of the unit. This particular unit is operated with a manual PTO, so it's got a manual uh, disengagement from the uh, from the high pressure pump. Uh, you'll only dis engage and disengage this particular PTO when the engine is at uh, idle speed. You'll never engage it when the engine is not running, and you'll never disengage it when the unit is operating at full speed. This particular control box uh, in this particular unit has automatic uh, throttle control and also has a manual throttle control. And the way that it does this is through uh, a pressure switch. If the unit does not sense any pressure on the high pressure side, it will return to a, an automatic idle, low idle. Or, or you can set the unit uh, to run in manual mode. You'll just flip the switch up, put it in manual mode, and it will operate in uh, uh, just like a traditional water blaster. Rabbit increases, turtle decreases the speed. The override system that's on this particular unit is for the additional safeties that are on the unit. If the uh, override is on, it bypasses the safety systems that are uh, equipped on this particular pump. This particular pump is equipped with several different types of safeties. We have a low water pressure shutdown right here. If it senses anything less than 50 psi falling, this pressure, this pressure switch will send a ground signal back to the diesel engine via the electronic e-stop on the bottom which will shut the unit down. This unit is also equipped with a uh, level switch in the tank. If the tank senses that there's a low level condition uh, prior to there being a low water pressure condition, it will also send a ground signal back to the e-stop on the engine and it will shut the unit down. This engine is also equipped with to the backside with a Murphy low level and high level oil shutdown switch. Now this is the oil level that's inside the power end case here. If the oil level gets too low, the switch will make contact, send a ground signal back to the engine. If for some reason water were to get inside of the power end because we are working with a wet fluid end on the front end and water was to transmit back into this power end, it would cause a high level oil condition which would also shut the unit down. So it's equipped with, with a number of safeties. Now that we're on this side of the unit, this is where the unit is filled with water. Um, for our particular application that we're running today, we're only running 15 gallons a minute the small uh, water supply is enough. We typically recommend an inch and a half uh, water supply for this particular unit. Directly inside of this water tank, it's equipped with a float so that the tank won't overfill or underfill. It'll fill the tank up to where it's full, it'll automatically shut off, and it'll allow no more additional water to go inside the tank here. From here, the water goes into the tank and it travels down this line right here. We've got a 100 mesh screen, uh, stainless steel wire mesh screen inside of this right here that is meant to uh, remove any large particles that, that might get inside of the tank. From there, we transition and we go into a charge pump that's located underneath this pump right here. It's run off of a belt drive system off of the diesel engine as well. From there, the water travels out of the dish discharge side of the charge pump to the inlet side to the inlet side of the, uh, the water filter over here. When the water leaves the water filter it goes back out this bottom port here over to the other side of the unit and will come back over to the other side. This is where the water returns from being filtered right here. It goes into a T right here. On the top side of this T, we have a, uh, a one gallon, 3,000 PSI suction pulsation dampener. What this does, as you start to run larger size plungers in this convertible pump, 
as that plunger pulls back, you may create a pulsation in this inch and a half hose that's located here. So what we've done is we put this pulsation dampener on here. You'll fill it to 50% of the nitrogen pressure of what your actual water running pressure is. So if you're running 80, P 80 PSI water pressure from your charge pump, you'll want to fill this with 40 pounds of nitrogen and that will act as a pulsation dampener for the suction side. The water then enters into the pump from here. It'll go through the high pressure pump and it'll exit at this point right here. This is your discharge or high pressure hose. Anything downstream of this um, is capable of pressures of 20,000 PSI with this particular unit. And the way we have this particular unit set up right now, we've got one 50 foot section of hose. We have one 50 foot section of hose that runs over to a device. device is called a nitrogen pressure regulating system. What this allows for is multiple operators to operate a dry shut style type of gun and whenever any either one of these operators, in this particular case we have two operators, at any point that either operator lets go of a gun and is no longer consuming water at the gun because it's dry shut, that additional water will come out the bottom port of this nitrogen pressure regulator located on the bottom. When that operator is ready to get back on the trigger, he squeezes the gun. The additional water that was coming out the bottom port no longer comes out the bottom. It comes out at the end of the nozzle. Neither operator is affected by what the other operator does. Both operators can quit at the same time. Any additional water will bypass out the bottom port. Both operators get back on the triggers. It will slow the consumption of water that comes out of this bottom port here. And this system is fully adjustable. For every 100 pounds of nitrogen in this particular system, will equate to approximately 1,000 PSI of water pressure. So if we set, we open this nitrogen bottle here, and we allow nitrogen to fill in here, uh, at, 1, 000, at 100 pounds of nitrogen, we'll get approximately 1,000 PSI uh, at the gun. If we go to 200 PSI, 2,000 pounds. If we go to 1,000 pounds of nitrogen, we'll get 10,000 pounds of water pressure. We'll need to go to almost uh, 2,000 pounds of nitrogen pressure to equal 20,000 pounds of water pressure. So this system is fully adjustable. If you have too much pressure, let's say you need to run 15,000 PSI, you'll simply close this valve here open this valve here, get it back down to about 1500 PSI. Once it's down to 1500, your water pressure that's coming out the end of the guns will be at 15,000. I think that pretty much explains the system. The guns that we're using today are the Gardner Denver uh, dry shutoff style guns. Anytime an operator is not squeezing the trigger on the gun, no water comes out of the end of the barrel, no water is produced at the gun. When the operator squeezes the trigger, uh, all the water is discharged at the end of the barrel. He lets go, all the water is dumped back at this system here. So there's no additional water at the point of use, especially if you're cleaning tanks, you're inside of a tank, you don't have to worry about uh, dumping extra water in the tank that you're going to have to remove all your day. One of the nice features about this 225 horsepower unit that we're working with, Superior Cleaning with, is this is a fully convertible pump. Um, in order to convert this particular pump from 20,000 PSI maximum operating pressure to 10,000 PSI or 15,000 PSI water pressure is there's a, a very simple way uh, to, to accomplish this and it's done only through changing the plungers, brass and packing and the collet nut or the uh, gland nut that holds it all in. So we don't need to change any of the valves that are located inside the suction manifold. We don't need to change any of the stuff in the boxes, or we don't need to untorque anything on the high pressure head itself. Everything can be done from inside the well. There are two bolts that are basically removed from an intermediate adapter that goes in between the plunger adapter and the plunger. It's a two bolt piece that basically separates top and bottom. At that point, you can remove the gland nut that's located inside the pump. You can then remove the entire plungers, brass, and packing from the well area. Once, that's, once the uh, plungers, brass, and packing are removed, 
you can merely reinsert this uh, plunger setup that we have here. Put your plunger in, put the new, new uh, gland nut in, tighten it, reattach it to the plunger adapters, and now you've converted the pump from 20K at about 15 gallons a minute to 10K at about 40 gallons per minute. And so that's uh, the ease of this convertibility kit here.